We are getting some comments from Patrick Parker, the president of the Philadelphia Federal Reserve Bank, and he's saying something that is very similar to what we heard from Mary Daly and Leo Brenner of the past uh, 24 hours. He said he expects the Fed to start shrinking its balance sheet soon, and he also worries inflation expectations may become unmoored. Now, these uh, kinds of comments reflected in what we're seeing in bond yields yesterday and then today as well, as well as in, on negative pressure on uh, U.S. equities. Let's talk more about all of this with Peter Oppenheimer. He's Goldman Sachs chief global equity strategist. Peter, thanks so much for being here. So we're seeing this big move upward in yields over the past couple of days. As you sort of look at the Federal Reserve's calculus here between raising rates, shrinking the balance sheet, what are you focusing on? How are you weighing those two factors in terms of the effect that they are going to have on the market? Well, I think what's clear to begin with is that we've seen a big move in guidance and what the markets are expecting in terms of the profile of rate increases, not just in the US, but elsewhere. You know, bear in mind, in the summer of last year, the markets were pricing no rate rises this year at all in the US. Now they're pricing between eight and nine. And we think that is necessary, given how inflation has picked up and inflation expectations too. And this leaves central banks in a difficult decision, uh, position, having to prioritize slowing inflation, even if it means slower growth. And that feeds through to risk assets by moderating growth and therefore valuations. And that's really, I think, the key driver of what we're seeing in the markets at the moment. Peter, over the past 24 hours, we have gotten some, I would say, uh, surprisingly hawkish commentary. You heard the comments there uh, from uh, Harker uh, and Lyle Brainerd yesterday. Are those the type of comments that warrant the market to pull back 5 to 10% uh, at some point this month? Well, I, I think there are a couple of cross currents here. First of all, rising rates, of course, are not helpful to risk assets, particularly if they're slowing growth expectations. And the speed of the adjustment is important. We've just gone through a two standard deviation sell off in the bond market, in other words, rise in bond yields. And that's typically met with some weakness in equities. Having said that, it's important to emphasize three things. Uh, first of all, real rates remain very negative. Uh, and that's pushing people up the risk curve into real assets, things that can grow with nominal GDP, like equities, and that's providing some support. Secondly, valuations have come down a long way. Most equity markets, at least out of the US, outside of the US, have lower valuations than long-term averages now. And thirdly, we should recognize that private sector balance sheets are strong. Households have got reasonable savings, but banks, and also the corporate sector have positive cash flow. They've got strong balance sheets, so they can withstand some degree of economic slowdown. I think there will come a point, though, where rising nominal rates push up real rates and will start to get some vo further vulnerability in equities. And that's really the thing to be watching for, I think. And, and what, what, what is that level that you're looking for in, in real rates here? Since we still, as you mentioned, we still have negative real rates, that is inflation adjusted rates. Is there a sort of magic number or are you just looking for them to go positive and then things will change? Well, I think that the speed of the adjustment is important. So mm -hmm. if it continues at the pace we've been seeing in the last two or three weeks, that's going to be difficult for equities to shrug off. Secondly, and most importantly, it really depends on what's happening to growth at the same time. If real rates are rising, but the economy remains pretty solid, confidence holds in and unemployment continues to remain very low, I think equities will struggle to make big gains, but they will you know, hold on to the sorts of levels we're seeing, perhaps with some more rotation beneath the surface of the index. However, if this move up in real rates really starts to come alongside slowing growth, perhaps weakening labor markets, then that's the sort of environment, I think, where you could see equities correcting back down towards the lows that we were seeing uh, a few weeks ago. Peter, uh, just given those comments, do you think uh, dividend paying stocks are the best ones to own, even in that type of backdrop? Yeah, very much so. Look, I think the last cycle was very much defined in the equity markets uh, as a sort of binary choice between growth, things that were growing and doing well, like technology, 
and value areas of the market that were largely disregarded because they were facing big structural problems, banks, commodity stocks, and so on. That way of looking at the market is much less relevant now. And what's really important is whether companies can hold on to their margins as prices and input costs rise, and secondly, whether they can hold on to their dividends. So margin sustainability, and dividend payouts and dividend sustainability, we think are two of the critical things for investors to look at. And I believe one of the ways that you're looking to get those things is through European banks. Is there a preference for European banks over US banks, for example, or do you think financials broadly are a good bet right now? Well, I think you know financials tend to benefit from rising rates and steeper yield curves typically, or certainly yield curves shifting upwards. That tends to be better for their ability to generate positive net interest margins. That's a good thing. Of course, at the same time, banks are cyclical and they don't tend to do well when you get recessions. So there's a, a difficult balance here for that sector. But European banks in particular do look really very cheap. And they do have strong balance sheets. Uh, and we are seeing a gradual move towards rising rates, but also importantly, a lot of fiscal support coming through in Europe, which is going to help to buffer uh, some of the negative growth shocks to some degree. And that should be quite helpful for banks. So we think a lot of them are quite undervalued in Europe. 